What up, Wizards? It's Big D from SBMTG, or at least that's what your mom calls me. And I come to you today on the eve of Innistrad Midnight Hunt with a fun list, or at least it's one of my favorite kind of lists to make. We're going to talk about the top 10 reprints I want to see in either Midnight Hunt or Crimson Vow. It doesn't really matter. But the thing is, oh, and Z Ziggy's here now, by the way. Uh, he can teleport, fun fact. But I've done this list a bunch of times over the last six years that I've been on YouTube. And I tend to repeat myself, and I don't want to do that. So nowadays when I do the reprints I want list, I tend to give myself a fun little restriction of some kind. And this time, we're going to do the same thing. The top ten is going to be only cards that have been in an Innistrad set. There's been like five of them. That gives us plenty of sets to look over. But that also means, uh, if you notice how carefully I worded that, that I can make the honorable mention not a card from an Innistrad set. And I'm going to exercise that because we're going to go back for the honorable mention. To a time when magic cards were legendarily powerful, right? It might be a little dangerous to print a card from this long ago because we know how unbelievably broken cards from the early 90s are. But we got to help out some tribes, and I think the best way to do it is Lesser Werewolf. Now, this card looks a little complicated, but I've actually I've got a copy of it right here, and we're gonna we're gonna read we're gonna read along. Okay, so it's a four mana two four uh, summon Lycanthrope. Um, and apparently the oracle test, the text on this is wolf, so it won't even help werewolves actually as a tribe. And all you gotta do is pay a black mana and have lesser werewolf get minus one, minus zero till end of turn. And you put a minus zero, minus one counter on target creature that blocks or is blocked by the werewolf. Use this ability after defense is chosen, but before damage is dealt, okay? You may not use this ability to reduce werewolf's power below zero. God, like, I guess, I guess that's an object lesson that, um... Sometimes not every old card is good. We've really come a long way in 25 years, haven't we? Let's not... This card's bad. Uh, so let's do let's do another card. But I guess as long as I'm making the honorable mention a card that wasn't a part of an Innistrad block originally, let's do Vampire Hex Mage. That's probably a little bit better. But while we're talking about Lycanthropes, why don't you like and subscribe? Anyway, I had to do that joke. I'm so sorry. I apologize. But let's talk about Hex Mage for just a second. First of all, I think it might be cool that, you know, this was originally from a Zendikar set, and we've got a Zendikar set in standard right now, right? So Vampire Hex Mage could wave back to, uh, to Zendikar and be like, hey, I made it to Innistrad. And, like, Vampire Hex Mage's family is, like, waving at it from Innistrad. Like, I'm so proud. I always knew Jeffrey would make it to Innistrad. He always wanted to go to Innistrad. This has gone in a direction. <laughs> but anyway, let's actually talk about the reasons why I want X Mage to be in the format. It's a vampire. That's it's right there on the card. Uh, and we're getting some vampires in the set, so it fits right in. So that's an excuse to have a really cool card like Hex Mage in the format that allows us to do things like dump all of the chapter tokens or whatever you call them off of the chapter counters <laughs> off of sagas, right? Like you could basically refresh a saga when it gets to chapter two by playing a hex mage. And that's kind of neat. You could kill a planeswalker. Seems good. <laughs> Just throw this down and bust a planeswalker in the mouth. So I like that about it. There's also a fair number of cards in standard that operate off of like lots of plus one, plus one counters. Like you undo all of the amazing things that a Luminarch Aspirin has done for your opponent up to that point. Like, There's just a lot of cool stuff about Hexmage, and I want it back. I want it back. It's a good, it's a, come on, there's tricks. Don't you miss the tricks? Let's uh, head over to Innistrad here for number 10 on our list. <laughs> probably, people are probably going to hate this. It's Dream Twist, and it doesn't even have to be Dream Twist, just like a card like Dream Twist, it's something that replaces Merfolk Secret Keeper. Like, we've got Tasha's Hideous Laughter. I don't have to remind you, you probably hate that these cards <laughs> exist post-rotation. A lot of people do, but we have Tasha's Hideous Laughter, Maddening Cacophony, Good old, good old crab. God, I like you, buddy. I like you, Rue. You're, you're a good crab. Um, and I would like to play like a mono blue burn deck, baby. And like this is a good way to get us there. You know, another just mill flashback piece that's relatively cheap to cast on both ends would be welcome. As far as I'm concerned, I know not everybody likes mill, but. You know, Mill is the scrappy underdog. It's a different way to win the game. It's really neat. That's how I felt about Mill for 25 years. Little did I know that as soon as Mill was a real deck, people immediately started hating it. <laughs> it's the, suddenly the bad guy. I didn't know I didn't know that was going to happen to you, Mill. I still believe in you, and I want more Mill cards. I want cool Mill cards. I know not everyone feels that way, but I do. Now, if number 9 is number 9, that means there's some pretty righteous cards on this list, because number 9 is already... 
a really good card. We got to figure out how to get good Zombos in the format because we know that we're going to have, uh, what is it, Champion of the Perished. We've already seen that card. One of the few spoilers we've seen so far, at least, from this set. So we know there's going to be some cool zombie tribal stuff going on, at least we hope. So we need a cool two-drop zombie. We've already got, like, white in the format. It's not a bad two-drop zombie, but... If we're looking for a two-drop zombie that isn't completely busted... You know, I wanted, like, Giralf's Messenger in this slot, but that's probably... It's really good. I think it's actually a three-drop zombie, but who's counting? But, um... <laughs> we want a two-drop zombie that's not, like, totally busted. I think we should probably give Relentless Dead another shot. So this card was in the format for, like, two years and just never did anything, right? Like, the zombie deck, even with, like, Crypt Breaker... The zombie deck was never great. It was, I guess, like, well, that's not true. Towards the end, <laughs> towards the end of its tenure in standard, that zombie deck was actually pretty decent and did some real work. But Relentless Dead wasn't even part of it all the time. So, it's just a what a weird list. How good do you have to be to not have Relentless Dead in you? It's just, this is a great card that could probably take like real advantage of all the treasure tokens that are flying around. When it goes to the graveyard, it grabs like Champion of the Perished for you because that's just a one drop you just pay one man to get your champion back or pay one man to get your shambling gassed back like there's a lot of really cool plays with a relentless dead and most of the time it's going to keep looping back and forth too so i just missed this card and i wanted to have another chance to do real stuff in standard because i think given the right format and the right zombie shell it's probably going to be a real card and it sucks that it didn't get the chance to do that the first time around so how about a sec let's do it again all right so number eight is on the list and I don't think that a lot of people really expected this thing to be here, uh, especially since so many people hated it the first time around. But I'm totally being serious, y'all. Let's... <laughs> Screw it. It's Geist of St. Trap. Like, I'm not going to keep explaining myself out of this. I think I might actually want this card. At first, this was Invisible Stalker, but I think I'm actually, like, more afraid of Invisible Stalker in the format than I am Geist of St. Trap, because I'm an idiot. This card... <laughs> in case you can't tell, this card is, like, really... Very good, uh, it turned out, for a long time. It's super annoying <laughs> to deal with this thing. Uh, but one, one reason I want it back is because I don't think it'll be as annoying to deal with as it used to be, especially with good sweepers in the format and stuff. We got Soul Shatter. It's not always going to pick this up, but we do have Soul Shatter, so there's that. Uh, I think there are some ways to deal with this that we didn't have access to originally. Plus, it's a Cleric. Imagine in your Bant or blue White Party deck having access to this in the 3-drop slot. It's a Cleric. That's pretty... Really, it it gives you a little a little oomph <laughs> to say the least. I just I know this was a really annoying card for a lot of people, but again, I don't think it's going to be nearly as annoying in terms of modern day magic. And I think it's still going to be a playable card that is awesome. Like don't don't get me wrong, but you know, a card it's just a three mana two two on the turn that you play it that doesn't play defense very well and just like dies. <laughs> As soon as you swing into combat with it. You know, again, that's probably not as impressive as it used to be, but it's still a playable card, and I like that. I think Geist could fit in well around here now. I know a lot of you are still haunted by it. If you were wondering where the puns are, there they are. I get, there's some going to be some bad puns. I'm, I can't let you down in that department. But look, I, again, I don't think it's going to be as annoying as it used to be. Let's try, let's try Geist. Is it that bad? Number seven. Let's just move on. If you thought those last couple of cards were a little much, especially Geist, I'm sorry. Uh, just wait till we get to number five. <laughs> but I'm going to kind of do like a palette cleanser here with number seven because this is a card that I had a ton of fun with. Back when I was like first starting out on YouTube, I, I did a lot of budget content. I still want to do a lot of budget content, so I would love if you would reprint one of the cards that I've had the most fun with on a budget level in like the last five or six years. And that... Is Thermo Alchemist. I have gotten a lot of emails <laughs> in my lifetime at this point uh, about how much people enjoyed like various different Thermo Alchemist decks that I did. I had so much fun with this card, and we know that we're getting like the new Shock that's better than Shock. We're getting the new Op that's better than Op. So like, I am totally ready for like a blue red spell burn type deck, and like Thermo Alchemist would still be a really good like backbone to that kind of deck. Just. Man, do you guys remember? Do you do you remember the times? Do you remember the times when we used to play like two Thermo Alchemists and they'd stay in play? Do you remember that? And then we'd play five spells and just kill our opponent. It was <laughs> so great. <laughs> like I miss Thermo Alchemist so much, and I don't really expect the card to see much competitive play. It gets reprinted, but I miss my buddy and I want him back. So since this is my list, he gets the number seven. But speaking of a card that I've had some fun with in the past, let's uh, do Laboratory Maniac again. Can we do that again? Can we have that card back? It's so good. <laughs> this isn't even like, I can't even say 
this card needs a reprint because it's too overpriced or anything like that. I think the card's like four or five bucks right now <laughs> to get your hands on a Lab Maniac, but I don't care. I really miss like doing stupid janky stuff, and if you... <laughs> That's the channel in a nutshell. So, if you didn't think Laboratory Maniac was going to be on the list, this is one of the few cards that like I didn't even have to look at Innistrad stuff. <laughs> I didn't have to plug in all the Innistrad sets to Scryfall. I knew this was going on the list and before I even started like <laughs> researching for the video. Because, man, do I miss Laboratory Maniac. And there's probably some stuff leaving Standard that would work really well with it. I imagine Laboratory Maniac would be... Like an upgrade to Thassa's Oracle in the mono blue Nyx Lotus deck or whatever, you know, like that could that could be a thing. But even with those cards leaving the format, I would love to be able to play Laboratory Maniac again because there's always a way to abuse it. Now, number five is probably the, it's the biggest one on the list, I would say. Um, but I'm putting it in number five because I don't know how much I want it reprinted, but I think you could reprint it and it wouldn't be like so bad, but... You know, I gotta do it. Number five is Liliana of the Veil. If you're gonna reprint this card in standard, now's the time to do it, probably. I mean, I think we, again, have, like, more tools nowadays to deal with this thing on turn three than we used to. Although, you know, you make your opponent sack their only creature, and then you make them discard a card every turn for the rest of the game. Like, that play pattern is still grueling it's it's just so brutal <laughs> like, but again i'm just not sure that this card is all it's cracked up to be in standard anymore i mean it still sees some play in modern but not anywhere near as much as it used to but it holds its price tag like crazy it's like 90 bucks to get your hands on a copy of liliana and they've reprinted it a few times but i think if you reprint it into a standard print run set that's going to see a lot and lot a lot a lot a lot of print <laughs> you know then maybe you could severely drop the price on this and i think that's probably good that's probably a good thing. And honestly, I, I know that people are going to go like nuts over this and be like, oh, there's no way this card could be in standard. But like, honestly, like creatures are so much more efficient now than they were in the original Innistrad block. You know, we've you know, werewolf pack leader is in this environment. <laughs> you know, I mean, your opponent just makes you sacrifice it, I guess. But it's pretty easy to get on board and like just kill their Liliana nowadays. And we've got stuff like, you know, Dragon's Fire and a lot of targeted removal and what. I just don't think that this card is as good as it used to be. I really, I think it's one of the better three mana Planeswalkers ever printed. But I'm pretty sure that it's not going to be the dominating force that it once was. But I am also a fat idiot, so I could totally be wrong. And you shouldn't reprint this card. Again, that's why it's number five. I'm not, I don't feel very strongly in my convictions, but originally, like, Parallel Lives and Crater Hoof Behemoth were on this list, and I'm pretty sure those are, like, actually more dangerous cards for standard. Especially, but don't reprint Crater Hoof Behemoth. You probably shouldn't. I would much rather play against Liliana of the Veil than Crater Hoof Behemoth. Especially with Auron's Epiphany in the format. This is a whole discussion, but still, I think it's safer than you probably think it is to do this. Does she even still have the Chain Veil? I don't keep up with the story enough. Is the, does she even have it anymore? Did we? Did she lose it more of the spark? I don't know. Thing. Um, didn't she kill all the demons? I don't know. I don't know. But anyway, <laughs> it's not for me to worry about. I just I look at the text box. That's what's important. But anyway, <laughs> let's move on to number four. And the list gets like way more tame from here on out. But it's all stuff like, like I specifically want to see, and I don't know how you're gonna feel about. But again, it's my list. So number four is Mentor of the Meek. I really miss this little duder, man. Like, it actually wouldn't be, like, a super slam dunk in standard either, right? The Mono White deck already has to play. The Skyclave Apparition, Elite Spellbinder, maybe Redain at the two-drop slot, especially if Snow is still everywhere after rotation. So, you know, again, you might just have room for, like, two Mentor of the Meek, and that's it. But that would be really good. <laughs> be so good in that deck to be able to just, like, draw like, two or three more cards over the course of a game would make all the difference. A little bit of late game action, you know. I just, I miss a lot about Mentor of the Meek. And now that, like, Bone Crusher Giant is leaving the format, I think that this it really carves a path for a creature like this to breathe for a moment and do some really cool stuff. So, again, this is just a personal pick for me. I've always liked this card. And it's definitely one of the cards that's, like, when it's in standard, it makes Mono White Aggro, like, a lot more comfortable to play. But, you know, again, not a slam dunk inclusion and still makes you spend mana you might not want to spend because you want to, like, activate Faceless Haven. So, you know, there's going to be some tough decisions sometimes when you have a Mentor of the Meek out. Not a total, absolute, you know, play set every time. But I do think it'd be worth a couple of copies in every deck and it wouldn't break standard. Number three, 
I'm going to call them check lands. Am I right about that? It's these things. <laughs> they come into play and they check whether or not you have a relevant basic land type. And if you do, then they come to play untapped. And I would just, I think that's a good solution. Nice, elegant solution to the sort of mana problem we appear to have in standard 2022 right now. I mean, you can give us pain lands if you want, but I don't know that you want the mana to be that good. So maybe something like this is a little better, which again, these aren't super slam dunks either. They're probably a lot better than snarls, but all that said, we are playing a bunch of snow covered, you know, dual lands in certain decks right now. We're playing creature lands like Faceless Haven and all the stuff that we got to see in AFR, right? So there are pathways. So we're actually not playing anywhere near as many basic lands as we often do so these aren't as good as they normally are but i still think they're a really good solution to a mana problem that we definitely have or you could just reprint cabin of souls you won't do it cowards bunch of cowards uh, number two though is probably nah number one's probably my most personal pick on the list but still number two is <laughs> let me say this number one would probably end up on other people's lists i'm not sure number two would but we already know they're bringing back flashback and I want a strong reanimation spell in standard. So why not bring back my favorite? Second favorite. My second favorite reanimation spell, possibly of all time. And that is Unburial Rites. I've had a lot of fun with this card. Like, so much fun in my life with Unburial Rites. By the way, my favorite reanimation spell of all time is probably Dread Return. Probably it could be animate dead, but I'm I'm sticking with dread return. I just mm, what a wonderful card that was. But unburial right since you're doing flashback, it's an Innistrad thing. We just reprint the card. It's so good. It's so fun. It's not always fair, but I don't care. I like a I like a good strong reanimation piece. I like self milling myself. That's how you say that. And then being able to cast a reanimation spell out of my graveyard on like the biggest creature. It's just it's the most fun in the world and it's good clean fun at that. So let me let me have unburial your rights back wizards. I actually think I've asked for this card to be reprinted before. And you didn't do it that time. So I'm coming to collect <laughs> give me unburial rights. But number one is Blood Artist. Uh, this is just my favorite card from any Innistrad ever. It kind of feels like it's what started it all, you know. Like in, ter in terms of like sacrifice decks, aristocrats decks, of what we what we now know as aristocrats decks, were a largely in part you know, a function of Innistrad at large. We had Falcon Wrath, Aristocrat, and other cards like that. But Blood Artist is the glue, man. That really tied the whole room together like a rug. So I'm, I miss Blood Artist for losing Bastion of Remembrance, which is one of my favorite cards in Standard right now. And I would love if the OG came back to reclaim its throne because, like, Aristocrats is one of my favorite decks to build. We've got so many tools for it in Standard right now. Too many to list. There's <laughs> just a ridiculous number of enablers for an Aristocrat shell. So give us, back, uh, give us back Blood Artist. I actually think that if they reprint anything from this list, this is, like, the most likely thing to get reprinted to for what it's worth. So... I'll be the happiest living man if they <laughs> if they would simply reprint Blood Artist. Do it. This one doesn't actually need that much explanation. I feel like I've been putting a bunch of explanation into a lot of these, and Blood Artist is just like, I love it. <laughs> you know, <laughs> I'm a complete like fangirl over over this card, and I want it back like the Jackson Five. I want want it. I want give it to me like a bunch of losers. I need it. <laughs> I need Blood Artist. If we're not going to have Bastion, give me something. <laughs> you know, but anyway, that's that's my list. Uh, it's kind of a weird one this time around, but I still think there are 10, well, there are nine really powerful cards. Wait, Thermo Alchemist. There are eight really powerful cards on this list. <laughs> and I would like to see each and every one of them back, but even if I could only get one or two of them, I'll be really happy about that. But let me know what you would have picked for this list. There's you know, how many card how many magic cards are there? <laughs> Hold on. There are currently more than twenty thousand unique magic cards. For some reason I thought it would have been more than that, but twenty thousand is a lot. Twenty thousand is a there there are twenty thousand options for this list or so. Um so I guess they do a lot of reprints, so twenty thousand is probably closer. That's a hmm, there's a fun fact, there are around twenty thousand magic cards. Um in the whole world. <laughs> <laughs> but there are 20,000 choices for this list, so let me know what you would have picked down there in the comments section. Um, uh, it can have horsemanship. I don't care. But um, aside from that, do all the YouTube stuff. A like and subscribe, that joke again. Uh, but no, seriously, subscribe, because tomorrow, literally starting tomorrow, 
Uh, there's going to be Innistrad Midnight Hunt spoilers, and I cover spoilers on the channel, wouldn't you know? So hit subscribe and hit the bell for notifications and do all the stuff YouTube wants you to do for no apparent reason. <laughs> and you'll, you'll be able to like know when I put new videos out and stuff. Again, especially relevant with spoiler season and whatnot. But aside from that to any of this stuff, we're going to be on Twitch discussing spoilers a little bit this season, playing some magic and whatnot. You can check out the Patreon to support the channel and make things better and help me pay my bills. I need to do that. People got to pay bills. I'm sorry. So help me support the channel there or follow me on Twitter for the occasional dumb whatever I feel like saying on Twitter. It's... I've, it's, you know, wrestling stuff, life stuff. I talk about food. Who, who knows? <laughs> Follow me on Twitter if you feel like it. But aside from that, I guess I'm done for this one. And I got to get some sleep before spoiler season starts. So let me edit this thing and throw it on the internet, throw it on the YouTubes. And I will catch you cats later. <laughs> Deb from the place. Thanks for watching, Wizards. Spread love and be kind. <laughs>